My name is Dylan Anderson, and I'm a consultant here at Coda Bears. Today, and in, in today's lunch line, we're going to be covering working with user-defined codes in Epic Core 10.2.600. Um, not a lot has changed between the versions of Epic Core 10 as far as user codes, as they're also very similar in Epic Core 9. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it. Again, covering uh, working with user-defined codes, not much has changed uh, with the user-defined code maintenance. Um, it's pretty much all the same consistent across versions. I, it's even similar to probably what's in 9, uh, Epic Core 9 as well. So the user codes, there's a menu item. It should be located in, in the system setup, system maintenance, and then the menu item is called user codes. In Epic Core 10, I like to use the search panel a lot. So if I click on uh, user codes here, I can I have some options here, such as I'm able to find a code type ID. So I'll just do it LL options for this. So lunch and learn options. And basically I'm creating user code type ID and then I'm gonna add a few codes here. So I can do a new UD code, file new UD code, and then go to the codes tab and I can define information about my code. The code text box is limited. There's a description, a long description box as well. So you can give it a short and a, a longer description. I've always found that the description box kind of work for me for the values that that I wanted. So something for the codes, I'm just going to do something very simple like OA, which is going to stand for option A. So I'll put that as my description. And essentially what you're putting in here is this is going to be the values in your drop down box that I'm going to show you how to create on a customization after we set up our code. And then I'll do a new UD code OB for option B. New UD code. And you, and you can add as many of these as you, you need. Um, for your project or or whatever you need to work on, and I'm just using very generic names here: option C, option B, option A. And I'm gonna show you how to add this to like a Epi combo box within a customization. And just note uh, a good use case of why you'd want to do use your codes, and rather than a static list in your Epi combo box on your dropdown, especially if it's like uh, options that you want to update later on or you know not necessarily have the technical ability or you don't you're not given the technical like privileges like if you're a payroll person you're not you might not have the same privileges as an IT person so um, this is a way that you could give somebody else and delegate you know them being able to maintain the options within these combo boxes especially if if uh, you want to add more on the fly rather than having somebody go into developer mode go into customization continuously update and maintain that static list so once I've created my, my code type and my codes, again, these can be as many as you want. They could say whatever. Um, you can use this active flag as well. I'm then going to go and make a customization. And this will really work on any screen that you desire. But I always tend for lunch and learns tend to fall under the order entry screen. It's just something I they always use. You can Add it on a customer. Actually, let's go ahead and do it a customer, and that way I don't have to go and dig for an order. We have a lot of sample customers. So on customer entry here, I'm going to open up in developer mode. I'm going to create a new customization, so I'm going to check base only so that I'm not working off top of somebody else's customizations. This is a training instance here. And then once you have like your entry menu that you want to add your Epi combo box open, you can right click within it or you can, I believe, go to tools and then click on customization here. As long as you're in developer mode, you should see this customization button. So once I click on uh, customization, I'm going to give it a minute to pop up here. All right, so once the customization tools dialog opens, I always kind of set up my monitor or my screen here to where I can see both the screen that I'm customizing as well as my tools dialog. Um, because as I click on fields here, you can see that it updates my tools dialog with the properties of each field that I'm clicking on. And it just makes it easier rather than having this over here. Um, I can't normally click on both, both items <laughs> unless these are next to each other. So I'm going to, on a normal practice, I will be, uh, I would normally create a custom tab and and uh, add my custom fields there just so that I know when Epicor is updating, it's not putting a, putting their controls over mine. But just for this Lunch and Learn, I'm just going to drop it here on this primary tab. So I'll go to Tools, Toolbox, 
here and my toolbox is basically a list of controls that I can choose from and the control that you're going to want to use is the the epi combo this is the combo that I found works best when I'm calling or using user codes with um, that be ultra combo it it uh, has its own kind of use case you can tie a BAQ very easily to that one as well um, if you want to go like a BAQ route or something um, but now that I have my epi combo box here created and then I'll select it make sure that in my tree view here epi combo selected and these are my properties for my epi combo you can give it a name you can I always like to remove the text so that it's not pre-filled out when the user sees my control the name I always like to give it a name you can call it LL user code <laughs> real generic again can be whatever you want you can't have spaces or special characters in the name and then I'm going to kind of scroll up here to my epi combo settings and there's a few settings that I'm going to define here first I'm going to go and define the epi bo name and if I click here in this field it shows a little drop down uh, button here that you can click on and it'll give you a list of like business objects that you can use for this use for this combo and one I'm looking for is the business object or the ice business object for uh, user codes so it's going to be icebo um, user codes right here so I'll select that and then basically so uh, my display member so what display member is basically what's going to show when they click this drop down arrow um, what column are we going to show the user and this here it auto filled out with code description so that's going to be our description column so it's going to show like option a option b when they click the drop down instead of oa ob oc and then the value member if you bind this field to a field let's say you had a custom field you wanted to store their selection your value member is going to be basically what you want to store in the database so code id here is fine for me um, you could change this to be the same thing if you wanted to show uh, option a in the database a little bit longer of a string or just use the code um, either one works because whenever it pulls this from the database if it is bound to a field it'll always show you um, the description of the code ID that is selected or saved and then retrieve on activate I leave on true so whenever we activate this drop down box for retrieving the user codes back the epi data set mode I always use a rows data set rather than a list basically rows you can actually with the combo boxes you can kind of have it show like a data table like multiple columns and stuff like that a list is just pretty much one column in a list of, of uh, a list of values that you can select from and since we're working with two different columns here and, and it's user code again I found online that as well as um, personal experience that the rows data set just kind of works better for displaying those values for us the way we want to display it by code ID as the value and then we only want to show the description and then you scroll down a little bit here so we selected user codes now you can have multiple different user code types we created ours with the with the type the code type ID is LL options so we got to tell Epicor or this combo box in Epicor that hey we want to use this user code type we don't want to use you know the thousands or or a few others that could be in the system so we set a search filter here and what we want to filter by and you can do a field help on this so help and then field help on your user codes maintenance and then click into the code type id field and then go to your technical details and it'll show you the the field name so ud code type if we type in our search filter here we can if you see code type id is the actual field name this is the the binding to to the field so we, we want to use the field name so for our search filter, it's going to be code type ID. And then this is similar syntax as if you were writing a SQL query, if you do write that. But if not, you're watching this. This is the, the way it needs to be typed. And then you'll put your, your code type ID in a single quote here. So LL options. And then another closing quote, LL options. And then basically, for this drop down so i'll save into ll options i'll create a new save it and then create a customization here since this is a new customization that i decided to create i'm not editing an existing one ll options customer 
save, click OK. I've now saved this UD box here and you can get more creative with it. You can add a label, you know, give your field a label, of course, just kind of like how Epicor does there. But these are all the major properties that you need. I always select the FEBO name first because it fills out a majority of them for me. On um, sort, you can always change the code description. So it's going to basically sort by code ID alphabetically first, A through Z. But you could put code description if you want to sort by code description instead of the ID. But we're I'm, I'm good with the way it is now. I'll click OK. I'm going to close out of my customer maintenance here. I'm still in developer mode. So I can reopen my customer maintenance screen. Oh, I thought I was still in developer mode. Maybe I took myself out. So click on customer maintenance. And then now, so here's my customization. I'm going to open that. As you can see, I have my drop down here. And since it's not bound to anything, it's automatically enabled. I didn't say to disable it. If it was bound to a field, naturally, um, it would automatically be disabled until you populate a customer in here. But as you can see here, this is option A, B, C. These are the user codes of uh, the UD code that I created for this example. At this time, I'm going to leave the chat open for any questions. If anyone has any questions about working with user defined code maintenance or you know using that in a customization, um, feel free to ask them in the chat below. If you don't have any questions, I thank you guys for attending and participating in this lunch and learn. Got a question or a couple of questions. So the, the, they're kind of similar here. So the first question is, does it save the value somewhere? And then um, the second question is, would you save it to a UD field then? So currently, the way I set it up, um, I just kind of showed you how to pull this into an epi combo, but I kind of briefly touched up on how to save it. Um, right now, if we close out of the screen, it's not saving it anywhere. But that's because I didn't bind it to anything. Typically, since it is a custom field and custom data, I would have it saved to a UD field. So you can create a UD field in your Epicor 10 environment. Or if you have one that's already existing that you can use, you can take that. But in that customization tools dialog here, if I reopen that, click on my field to get back to my properties, my epi binding. If you click in the epi binding property, you, you get that same drop down box kind of like we did earlier. And then you can go to the table that you added your UD field on or the, where the UD field lives, and you can go and select it. But uh, I don't have any UD fields loaded on the customer table right now, but Typically, that's kind of the route I would take is I'd create a UD, UD field first and you go into, um, let's see, in, uh, in uh, Epicor 10.2.600, UD column maintenance. Um, that's under system setup, system maintenance, and then UD and column maintenance. You can open up that menu, um, pull up the table and add your field in, then go to the Epicor admin console, do a data model region, um, or have your IT department do it. And then once you go to your customization, it, your UD field will then appear under that table in this epi binding. For something as simple as customer, you could kind of select something like, let's say you had an approved state list as user code. For whatever reason, you populated all of the states within a user code maintenance. Then you could probably set this on and bind it to like the same field that the state is and then just have the user fill it out that way because these are all um, typed in anyway. So you could use a field like that or, again, go the route of creating UD fields, storing it in there. That's probably going to be the best way and what people are going to do 99.9% .9 of the time. And then once you bind it, again, you're going to have to load a customer record in before this field's uh, available for you to you know, select an option. So, yeah, I would save it as a UD field and bind it to a UD field, which will automatically save it since you're binding it and then opening up a customer, selecting your option, hit save. It'll save it in that UD field. But right now, since there's no binding, it's not saving the value anywhere. And you don't have to use the binding. Like if you're doing something programmatically, you could actually just use the user selected value, but then you would have to get into you know, programming something off that. Like if you wanted to perform a certain action based on what they selected, well, I've done that too, and then had a button here. Yes, so the table you use has to be an existing um, Epicor table for you to save the data like the in the customer maintenance screen this is all the tables you have access to in the customer maintenance screen if you wanted to let's say add a UD table 
you could actually do that through the tools, wizards, customization window, wizards, and then as a user defined table as a child, there's a way that you can get the UD table pulled in here, and it generates all the code that you need to view, add, edit, and delete UD table data for your UI application. For example, in part maintenance, can I add a field to enter a cust ID and verify against the customer table? Yes. And so, <laughs> yeah, so you can go to extend it or that UD column maintenance menu here under system setup, system maintenance. Um, open up the part table, add a UD field, call it cust ID, and then save it. It'll update that field, of course. It'll have cust ID underscore C. And then you could add an epic combo box. And actually, in your scenario, it's kind of where I wouldn't actually use user code because that cust ID value is already available out there. But depending on how many customers you have, you might want to use user codes because what you can actually do is take your epi combo, go to your epi bo name, and go and find the customer one. And then you'll define your display uh, member to be probably name for customer name. And then your value member, you want to store the cust ID. And then you can have that drop down only display and it'll always update because uh, every time you add a customer, that that drop down box will always pull the new customers into its list. So you could click this drop down and it'll show you all the customers by just by changing this EpiBO name to property to be that uh, customer, the customer one. And I'll give you a full list of customer IDs. You could do the display member as the cust ID too instead of the name if you want. Like it could be, you know, again, whatever you want. The value member is what you want to store in that database field, that UD field on part maintenance. And then since you'll have it set up that way, as long as it's saving in that UD field and you uh, and you have that epi, well, as long as you have the epi binding to that UD field, if somebody selected it, it's saved. Um, once they go into that part again, it'll pull back with the actual customer ID um, or whatever's in that display uh, member field. So if you're displaying the name, for example. But if you, again, if you just wanted to use a list of cust IDs, you could go the user code route and then have somebody maintain and update that user code list. But that wouldn't necessarily self, it, it, it won't necessarily verify with, against the customer table. You would have to create some logic against that. But I'm kind of the route that I was telling you to do the ISBO um, customer table. You'll always know that those are correct cust IDs because it's coming from the table itself. And I think that's going to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this meeting now. Again, thank you guys for joining for those that are still sticking around and see you guys next time.